We are starting out with Raw, where Bronson Reed demolished Seth Rollins in arguably the biggest showcase of the Australian in WWE, as he flattened the former world champion with six tsunamis. This was obviously done to start a program between Rollins and Reed, but that's not all this attack did, as it also effectively wrote the visionary off of TV. According to Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Radio, Rollins is dealing with some injuries, and the attack by Reed was to take him off TV so he can heal up. While Rollins is still cleared to wrestle, he's said to be banged up, and though this situation is not believed to be severe, he'll now have opportune time to get back to 100%. The return date for Rollins is uncertain, and it is unclear if he'll be back in time for the upcoming pay-per-view Bash in Berlin on August 31st, where he is expected to face Reed. Rollins suffered an injury in January of this year but only missed a few weeks of action before competing again, though took another break after WrestleMania 40. After dealing with a torn meniscus, Rollins returned in late June and has been involved in the storyline between Drew McIntyre and CM Punk ever since. Speaking of injuries, Dakota Kai was ambushed by Sonya Deville's faction on Raw, and it's noted that like Seth, this was to write her off of TV so she can deal with real-life injury issues. This is an unfortunate situation for both, and what's your view on Seth Rollins being written off TV? Do you feel he'll return this month? Sound off in the comments section below. As we reported yesterday, Ricky Starks continues to be absent from AEW TV, with many in the company believing that he'll be heading to WWE when his contract is up. Starks hasn't been seen since the March 30th edition of Collision, where he appeared to sustain an injury during a tag title tournament match with Big Bill against Top Flight. The belief that Starks is heading to WWE is reportedly why AEW has not been investing in a storyline for him, but what do WWE think of the former AEW World Tag Team Champion? According to Mike Johnson of PW Insider, WWE is interested in signing several All Elite Wrestling stars and that Ricky Starks is on the list. WWE sources have indicated that there is certainly interest in several AEW talents whose contracts are nearing expiration or who have been off television for a while. Dustin Rhodes' contract with AEW is said to expire in September 2024, and there's also the ongoing situation with Brian Danielson, whose contract with AEW ended on August 1st. Ricky Starks is among those mentioned, although there is no confirmation on whether WWE and Starks have engaged in talks or how long he has left on his current deal. Only time will tell whether Ricky Starks will return to AEW or if he'll sign with WWE somewhere down the line, as anything is possible in the world of professional wrestling. It was reported this week that the Lucha Brothers are expected to leave AEW this year, with Penta El Cerro Miedo's contract with the company set to expire within a matter of weeks. Not only are they expected to leave, but it's believed the pair could be heading to WWE, and the tag team's latest move is another sign that their time as All Elite Talent is ending. According to PW Insider, the Lucha Brothers filed several trademarks on August 1st, including for Cero Miedo, Zero Miedo, Animo, Fuego, King Fuego, and Rey Fuego. These names are being filed for the use in entertainment, such as pro wrestling, and were filed with the Mexa King brand company, which is based in California. It's important to note that since the Lucha Brothers are trademarking these names, WWE would need to pay them if they wanted to incorporate them into their own programming. With that said, it's likely these names will be their post-AEW names, unless WWE opts to go with entirely different names should Penta and Ray Phoenix join the company. Many feel that the Lucha Brothers leaving AEW would be a huge blow to the company, considering their contributions to AEW over the past several years. Only time will tell what comes next for the pair, and do you believe the Lucha Brothers will leave AEW for WWE in the end? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. On tonight's SmackDown, Roman Reigns will appear on the blue brand after his return at SummerSlam, and fans should get used to seeing the original Tribal Chief. In addition to tonight's show, Rain is also advertised for the August 16th show in the Kia Center in Orlando, and that's not all for the former world champion. Reigns is also being advertised for the first episode of SmackDown on the USA Network on September 13th that'll take place in Seattle, Washington. After WrestleMania 40, fans awaited the return of Roman Reigns, who attacked Solo Sokoa at SummerSlam. And what's in store for Roman Reigns on tonight's show? One idea floating around isn't for Reigns to come straight for Solo Sokoa, but instead a confrontation with Jey Uso or Sami Zayn on tonight's show. 
Obviously, both men are Raw superstars, but as we've seen lately, Nick Aldis and Adam Pearce have been more open to sharing their roster in a cross-branded trade. SmackDown's Randy Orton and A-Town Down Under were on this week's Raw, and Aldis could be repaid by having Jay or Sammy on tonight's show in a face-to-face -face with their former ally. If Reigns doesn't go for Sokoa tonight, it's also possible he could set his sights on Cody Rhodes, the man who dethroned Reigns back at WrestleMania 40. The two have a long, storied history, and after Reigns' actions in Cleveland inadvertently benefited Cody, it may be time for a third match between two of WWE's top draws. But what do you think Roman's direction should be on tonight's SmackDown? Sound off down in the comments. The last time Bobby Lashley appeared on WWE TV, it was back in April, and in recent weeks, there's been plenty of talk about his run coming to an end. There's a world of wrestlers outside WWE who could soon be sharing the ring with Lashley, and on Twitter, Matt Cardona made it clear that he wants to face the almighty superstar. Lashley and Cardona have faced off before, and in fact it was Lashley who beat Zack Ryder in the Broskies' final WWE match in March 2020, mere weeks before he was released. According to Fightful Select, Lashley's WWE contract will be up this weekend, and since news of his WWE status emerged online, Lashley has been discussed backstage at AEW. However, no formal offer has been made yet given that Lashley is still under a WWE deal, but it remains to be seen if he'll join AEW as anything is possible in wrestling these days. If AEW isn't in the cards for Lashley, then his future could be in Japan, as it's noted that there is significant interest in Lashley competing in the country after his WWE run ends. What are your thoughts on Matt Cardona calling out Bobby Lashley? Where do you think Lashley will head after the end of his WWE contract? Sound off in the comments. On this week's Dynamite, MJF beat Kyle Fletcher in dubious circumstances and attacked referee Paul Turner after the match, an action that could cost the AEW American Champion. After all, Tony Khan hasn't been afraid to lay down the law before, and MJF's actions could result in him being suspended from the promotion for a window of time. MJF used his title as a weapon and likely would have continued if not for the arrival of Will Ospreay, and this could prompt the AEW president to take drastic action. Suspending MJF could mean that the AEW American title match at All In would be in jeopardy, and Khan could go one step further by stripping MJF of the gold. That would mean that fans going to Wembley would still get a title match and get to see Will Ospreay in action, as well as build towards an MJF Ospreay rematch at a later date. If that were to happen, then the question would be who would replace MJF at All In, and Khan could go with none other than a former WWE superstar. Rumors are rife that Bobby Lashley and Ricochet might join AEW soon, and there wouldn't be a better place for either man to debut than at All In against Will Ospreay. But what do you think? Should MJF be suspended, and if so, who should replace him at All In? Sound off down below. Recently, Britt Baker has been the center of controversy in AEW, as she was suspended following an altercation with MJF and his girlfriend Alicia Atout. MJF wasn't suspended since AEW's investigation believes he was merely defending a tout from Baker, and this may not have been the first source of trouble stemming from the DMD. While speaking on his Keep It At 100 podcast, Conan suggested tensions between Brandy Rhodes and Britt Baker were a factor in Cody Rhodes' decision to leave AEW. He explained, One of the reasons that Cody left amongst many was there was problems between Brandy and Britt. Tony always takes her side. You'll find out one day. This is certainly a massive claim by Conan, as many see Cody's exit from AEW as a turning point for the company and wrestling as a whole. After all, Cody's exit from AEW would see him return to WWE, and since then, there has been a notable improvement in that promotion, complete with a change of management backstage. In AEW, however, Cody's exit would be followed by growing backstage problems and injuries, as well as the infamous incidents at All Out 2022 and the altercation at All In 2023 in Wembley. Britt has also reportedly been at odds with Thunder Rosa in the past in a beef that was covered on AEW All Access, though of course the reality show should be taken with a pinch of salt. But what do you think of this accusation made against Britt Baker? Do you believe she was responsible for Cody Rhodes leaving AEW? Sound off in the comments section below. Baker didn't appear in person at this week's Dynamite, but via a video promo in which she shared that her suspension had been lifted by Tony Khan. 
On AEW TV, Baker was suspended by the Young Bucks for an altercation with Mercedes Monet at San Diego Comic-Con ahead of their TBS Championship match later this month at All In. Following Dynamite, Monet took part in an Instagram Live session and addressed Britt Baker's return and was frustrated that Britt had been brought back into the fold. Monet called out Britt for the drama caused in AEW, referencing her confrontation with MJF and questioned the decision to lift her suspension. The CEO felt that Baker was stealing the spotlight and shifting attention away from her and vented about the only criticism she's faced, especially regarding her fashion choices. Monet, who sees herself as a model and the epitome of beauty, defended her choice to wear high heels, emphasizing her confidence and criticized those nitpicking her appearance. The TBS champion said those fans should step away from the internet and enjoy life outside the web, as the CEO had plenty to say about the fans and about her upcoming opponent. What's your view on Mercedes Monet directly addressing Britt Breaker's online rumors? Who do you see winning at AEW All In? Let us know in the comments section below. When John Cena announced at Money in the Bank that 2025 will be his final year in the ring, a litany of wrestlers put their names forward as opponents, including Braun Breaker. While speaking with the Daily Star, Breaker revealed that his ultimate dream match would be to retire John Cena and hopes to face John on his upcoming retirement tour. Breaker believes that if Cena wants to have the best possible match with elite talent he hasn't faced yet, then that's him, and spoke of his position as one of WWE's top emerging superstars. Breaker said in a different interview this week that he's willing to put his Intercontinental title on the line against Cena, the only title in WWE's Grand Slam that John is yet to hold. Braun's comments are more than wishful thinking, as sources indicate that aside from Gunter, WWE is seriously considering Breaker as a potential final opponent for Cena. Do you want to see Braun Breaker versus John Cena in a retirement match, or is there a better last opponent for the WWE icon? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. Video game news now as fans are awaiting news on WWE 2K25, and this week, the quarterly earnings call from Take-Two Interactive shared some massive details about the project. During the call, it was confirmed that WWE 2K25 will release before March 31st, 2025, lining up with a period of time in which 2K20 and 2K22 were released to the public. The call also highlighted the success of WWE 2K24, noting that the game enhanced its profitability and was praised as the highest rated entry in the WWE 2K series. With WWE 2K25 set for an early 2025 release, what new features are you hoping to see, and what have you made of the DLC choices for WWE 2K24? Let us know down in the comments. It was back in January that CM Punk and Drew McIntyre's feud properly began, with Punk sharing that he'd suffered a torn triceps injury in the Men's Royal Rumble match a few days earlier. Punk's injury came from a Future Shock DDT delivered by Drew McIntyre, who would cement his role as a heel by taunting Punk, claiming he prayed for Punk to get injured. A brawl ensued that saw McIntyre take Punk down, kicking off a feud between two of WWE's very best that has captivated fans ever since. Speaking with Sam Roberts, McIntyre addressed the original promo intended for the storyline and how Triple H intervened to tone down the intense comments Drew had originally planned. I actually went a step further and between Triple H and I, we got it where we felt like we wouldn't offend a lot of people. I had it a little further than that and Triple H dialed me back slightly and we landed there. We don't know what McIntyre was going to say in his original promo, but it must have been substantial for WWE's chief content officer to feel the need to step in. What do you think of Drew McIntyre's promo being altered to avoid offending people? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. At WWE events, you can find Logan Paul's beverage Prime being advertised, including on the ring mat at PLEs, but the drink has been a source of controversy for some time. As previously reported, Logan Paul's sports drink called Prime Energy got a ton of attention from the FDA, who have been concerned with the drink's high caffeine content. For context, one bottle of Prime is the equivalent of drinking six cans of Coca-Cola, and now Prime is back in the news, once again for the wrong reasons. According to Bloomberg, Refresco, which supplies Prime Energy drink, is suing Prime for at least $67.7 million and claims Prime broke a contract from 2023. The contract in question required Prime to order at least 18.5 million cases of the drink each year for three years, totaling 55.5 million cases in a massive deal. 
Refresco even set up a special production line just for Prime so that this contract could be fulfilled, which involved a lot of upfront costs and setup time. The lawsuit, filed on August 2nd, said Prime didn't meet its order requirements in the first year, which led to a penalty, though it's unclear just how much this penalty was for. Refresco has said that this penalty could be repaid if Prime meets the full order amount over the three years, but there's much more to this situation. The complaint states that while the contract was based on high demand for Prime, sales dropped well below expectations by 2024 and chalked up fading social media hype for this downturn. It also said that seasonal changes and other legal issues may have caused the drop in interest in Prime, as the beverage chain has become increasingly easier to get a hold of. Prime has also missed a required test run for new machinery in March and didn't place any orders by April, leading to the contract being terminated. As a result, no Prime drinks were produced on the production line Refresco set up, and this is not the only lawsuit that Logan Paul and KSI are dealing with. Prime is also facing legal action from the US Olympic and Paralympic Committee, who accuses Prime of falsely claiming to be connected to the Games and Team USA, and is seeking a lot of money in damages. This issue stems from a Kevin Durant-inspired bottle that makes references to the Olympics, which the committee argues is Prime trying to fool its consumers into thinking a deal is in place. Prime's latest legal issues haven't gone unnoticed by WWE, and Wade Keller reports that WWE is disappointed in Logan Paul for this latest problem. This follows on from several controversies for Logan Paul, and on social media, WWE fans have made themselves clear about the former United States champion. What's your view on Logan Paul's Prime facing yet another lawsuit? Do you think WWE should take action against the Maverick? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. Since his resignation, Vince McMahon has been actively reimbursing WWE for the misappropriated funds stemming from the scandal that ended his reign in the company. Last September, WWE and UFC merged under the umbrella of TKO, and we have an update on McMahon's payments thanks to the company's latest quarterly report. The report states that as of December 31st, 2023, McMahon owed a total of $1.5 million to various parties, and this is a liability he settled in full as of June 30th, 2024. The report adds that McMahon will make future payments to certain counterparties personally and is committed to reimbursing WWE for costs incurred during the investigation into him. That investigation was conducted by a special committee of the former WWE Board of Directors and was part of the wider scrutiny into McMahon's financial dealings and alleged misconduct. As McMahon exits the wrestling empire he built, the legal and financial ramifications of his actions continue to unfold and will continue to follow his actions for updates. What are your thoughts on Vince McMahon's resignation and the ongoing legal slash financial challenges he faces? Do you think it'll impact WWE and the fans? Sound off down below. Right now, few WWE superstars are more popular than Jey Uso, who has proven to be a hit as a single superstar after years of being a part of a tag team with his brother. With Roman Reigns back and needing allies to face the new bloodline, some have speculated whether Jey could return to his cousin's side, possibly alongside his brother Jimmy. Speaking to Busted Open Radio, Jay was asked about the possibility of a tag team return and confessed that he's not seeking a reunion with his brother despite their success. He said, If I could be honest right now, I would like to continue on my singles path right now. Me and my brother, we already the best tag team in WWE history right now. That's checked off. On his own, Jay has proven to be a hit with fans, though Championship Gold continues to elude the main event star, something he'll no doubt be hoping to change. What are your thoughts on Jey Uso not being interested in returning to tag team wrestling at the moment, and what do you think is next for him? Sound off in the comments. Earlier this year, Joseph Connors, a name from NXT UK, was involved in a serious car accident after he and others were traveling back from a show in the United Kingdom. The driver of the vehicle that hit them was believed to be under the influence, and after the accident, Connors shared a statement about the crash and that he was now okay. Despite the statement, some clickbait YouTube channels have shared videos claiming he died in the crash, despite the statement from the wrestler showing he's very much alive. Taking to Twitter, Connor shared some thumbnails talking about his apparent death and once again proved that he is still in the land of the living. This should serve as a reminder that not everything seen on the internet can be believed and that Joseph Connors is still alive despite what some are trying to say. 
All in news next as the show will be the biggest wrestling event in the UK this year and could see some of the top names from the British wrestling scene involved. Fightful Select reports that Rev Pro undisputed British heavyweight champion Michael Oku is being considered by AEW for a role at All In and the upcoming August 21st Dynamite in Cardiff. Oku is one of the biggest stars on the independent circuit today and will challenge MJF for the American Championship at Rev Pro's Summer Sizzler this weekend. Oku is even teased appearing at All In with a recent video compilation, and Fightful's report adds that Rev Pro's Amira Blair is also being considered for All In. All In promises to be a huge show, and don't be surprised if some of the biggest names from the UK get a spotlight in Wembley Stadium later this month. And we're ending with NXT, which will move to the CW this October, and WWE has big plans for the gold brand outside of the Performance Center. PW Insider reports that WWE is considering increasing the number of NXT shows outside the PC with a goal of elevating NXT's prestige ahead of its move to broadcast TV. By hosting events in various locations, WWE hopes to attract younger audiences and introduce them to the broader WWE programming, and that's not the only big plan. WWE wants to enhance NXT's appeal by featuring more main roster talents as guest stars or regulars to further strengthen NXT's position and increase its visibility. WWE will be pulling in substantially more money with their CW deal, and fans can expect to see quite a few changes, and it remains to be seen if NXT will see major improvements in October. Are you looking forward to NXT's upcoming move to the CW network? Let us know in the comments section below, and as always, thanks for watching.